Nanda Devi is a majestic mountain located in the Uttarakhand region of India. Standing at a height of 7,816 meters at its summit, it is the second highest peak within the nation of India, outsized only by the third highest mountain in the world, the 8,586 meter high Kanchenjunga, which lies on India's border with Nepal. Nanda Devi's imposing slopes loom over the lush glacial valleys below, and the peak has long held a cultural significance to the local people living there. Due to its perceived prominence, Nanda Devi was widely believed to be the highest mountain in the world, before it was determined during a survey conducted in the year 1808 that Dalagiri, one of the 14 8,000 plus meter peaks in the entire world, was indeed greater in height than Nanda Devi. During the early years of Himalayan mountaineering, Nanda Devi, of course, would prove to be a highly sought after first ascent. However, early summit hopefuls that ventured to the peak would face a major roadblock before they even began their ascents, as the only way to access the peak is through the Nanda Devi Sanctuary, a valley that is enclosed by several other massive nearby peaks, a topic I touched on more in depth in my video about Chongabong, if you'd like to learn more about that. Anyways, it was quickly ascertained that there is really only one way to reach the Nanda Devi Sanctuary at the mountain's foot, through the Rishi Gorge, which is a steep, narrow glacial canyon, rife with its own dangers to endure, and many of the first expeditions seeking to reach the summit of the peak were repelled by the Rishi Gorge. However, the intense desire to be the first person to successfully ascend Nanda Devi's striking slopes and reach its summit would fuel the most dedicated of summit hopefuls to brave the hazards of the Rishi Gorge to reach the base of the mountain, and in the year 1936, two men named H.W. Tillman and Noel O'Dell from a British-American expedition team to the peak reached the summit in triumph, which was a landmark first ascent in early Himalayan mountaineering. This first ascent was truly a groundbreaking climb indeed, as remarkably, the expedition team of seven members used no fixed ropes at all during their ascent, and were only assisted by Sherpas up to an altitude of 6,200 meters before striking out for the summit on their own. Furthermore, at the time, their ascent was the highest peak that was confirmed to have been summited by humans, a record which they would hold for a further 14 years, until the first successful ascent of Annapurna in 1950. Due to the difficulty of reaching the Nanda Devi Sanctuary alone, following the first ascent of the peak, few expedition teams would attempt to ascend Nanda Devi, with even fewer finding success in their attempts as the next successful ascent of the peak would take place an entire 28 years later in 1964. However, following this aforementioned 1964 ascent, throughout the rest of the 1960s, Nanda Devi would see a substantial increase in activity on its slopes, and not for the reasons you might expect either. In 1965, the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, or CIA for short, in collaboration with India's equivalent agency, the Intelligence Bureau, or IB for short, concocted a plan to install a, I kid you not, nuclear-powered telemetry relay device on Nanda Devi summit, which was designed to intercept telemetry signals during Chinese missile launch tests during the infancy of China's nuclear missile testing, and thus access to the Nanda Devi Sanctuary was restricted to the general public during this time. The device was constructed for use shortly after, and an expedition team was sent to the mountain to install the device. However, they were repelled by the harsh weather conditions that battered Nanda Devi's slopes as they attempted their ascent, 
and the team was forced to abandon the device on the slopes of the mountain in order to make their retreat. The following spring, the team returned to the site to recover the device and to continue their bid to install it on the summit if it remained undamaged. However, upon returning to the mountain, the teams were unable to find it, and after this debacle, the CIA and the IB eventually scrapped the idea entirely by the year 1968. Access to the Nanda Devi Sanctuary would be reopened to mountaineers in 1974, and the next team of summit hopefuls would arrive at the base of the peak in the Nanda Devi Sanctuary two years later, in the late summer of 1976. In August of 1976, an expedition team of 13 members reached the foot of Nanda Devi for an attempt at a new, difficult, unclimbed route to the summit up the peak's northwest buttress. Amongst the expedition team's ranks were several highly experienced Himalayan mountaineers, including team co-leaders H.W. Carter, a member of the first ascent expedition team in 1936, American mountaineering pioneer Willie Unzold, who was a prominent member of the first American team to summit Mount Everest along its difficult and treacherous West Ridge route in 1963, and a man named Lou Reichardt. Other notable members of this 13-person team were a man named John Ross Kelly, a man named Jim States, a man named Pete Lev, a man named Andy Harvard, and Willie Unzold's 22-year-old daughter, Nanda Devi Unzold, who, obviously, was named after the very peak she would be attempting to ascend as a member of this expedition team. In mid-August of 1976, the team made their approach without too much difficulty, although Nanda Devi Unzold, who typically went by Devi, complained of some abdominal pain on the second day of the trek, as the expedition team was making their approach into the sanctuary towards the foot of the peak. Upon arriving at Nanda Devi's slopes, the team set to work fixing ropes and their camps along their route up to the summit, and as the final few days of August approached, the first summit team, which consisted of climbers Lou Reichardt, Jim States, and John Ross Kelly, gathered at Camp 4 to make a push for the summit on September 1st. The first summit team was indeed successful in reaching the summit on September 1st, and following their successful ascent, the trio descended past the team's high camp, Camp 4, and opted instead to join the other two teams at Camp 3. The expedition's second summit team consisted of climbers Andy Harvard, Pete Lev, and Nanda Devi Unzold. Upon reaching Camp 3, Lou, Jim, and John regaled the group with tales of their journey to the summit, which stirred up excitement across the second summit team, who intended to make a push for the summit within the next few days. This reunion at Camp 3 had not been intentional, however, as the second summit team had intended to ascend to Camp 4 that day, to better position themselves for a summit push. However, they opted to forgo ascending to Camp 4 on September 1st due to a large ominous black storm cloud that loomed nearby that morning. This ominous cloud had actually not posed a threat to the climbers and it cleared by the afternoon, and the weather on September 1st ultimately proved to be exceptionally good which facilitated the first party's descent to Camp 3 instead of Camp 4. While the expedition party's morale was very high overall at this point, John Ross Kelly expressed concerns about Andy Harvard, who had developed a nasty cough. However, Andy insisted that he was fine. The following day, September 2nd, the weather was cold, snowy, and windy, and so the expedition party hunkered down at Camp 3 for the remainder of the day. The teams parted ways the next day on September 3rd, 
as the first summit team, who was confident in the second's chances of success, descended to base camp, as John was eager to leave the area and return to the United States to be there for the birth of his child. The second summit team, Andy, Debbie, and Pete, ascended to Camp 4, while the third team, consisting of Willie Unsold and two other climbers, trailed behind them to cache food and other supplies along their route. The ascent from Camp 3 to Camp 4 would prove to be an arduous journey for the second team, as at 7 p.m. that evening, Pete radioed Willie to inform him that he had reached Camp 4 ahead of Andy and Devi. At 11 p.m. that evening, Willie received a second radio call from the second summit team, informing him that Andy had arrived at Camp 4 and that Devi was close behind him. The following morning, on September 4th, the weather conditions for a summit push were ideal. However, Andy, Devi, and Pete were still exhausted from their push to Camp 4 and decided to forgo an attempt at the summit in order to get some much needed rest. The following day, on September 5th, after these delays had pushed back the second summit team's attempt at reaching the summit back from what they had originally planned, and with the second team still not feeling rested enough to make a push for the summit that day, the second and third summit teams agreed that they would make an attempt at the summit together within the next few days, and after collecting many of the supplies they had cached, the third summit team returned to Camp 3 that evening to rest. Meanwhile, the second party at Camp 4 did manage to do a bit of scouting along their route to the summit before they were ultimately forced to retreat back to Camp 4 due to the worsening weather conditions. The following day, September 6th, Willie was feeling well enough to advance up the peak to Camp 4. However, the remainder of the third summit team was too spent from the previous day of climbing and opted to remain at Camp 3 while Willie advanced to Camp 4 to join the second summit team, reaching Camp 4 at 9 p.m. that evening. The following day, September 7th, a blizzard barraged the slopes of Nanda Devi, and thus, the climbers were relegated to spending the day in their tents at Camp 4, resting. However, Willie found that all was not well with the members of the second summit team, who now had spent over five days above an altitude of 24,000 feet, and his daughter Devi, in particular, seemed to be in a state of particular discomfort, as she reported that she was bloated and gassy, and continued to suffer from diarrhea as a symptom of her abdominal distress, and spent most of the day and the next night sitting upright, attempting to belch the uncomfortable gas out of herself. The following morning, on September 8th, the weather conditions remained poor for making a push for the summit, and so, after some deliberation, the team decided to depart from Camp 4 at noon to descend to Camp 3 in order to wait out the storm and recover their strength. The team had packed their gear and was preparing for their departure from Camp 4 at approximately 11.45 a.m. that morning when Devi, who had complained of her discomfort and exhaustion, was suddenly stricken by her condition, calmly stating, quote, I am going to die, before she slipped into unconsciousness. Willie would attempt CPR, including mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, on Devi, and Willie recounted after spending 15 minutes attempting CPR on his daughter, he felt her lips grow cold. Regardless, Willie continued to attempt to resuscitate his daughter for a further half hour before he accepted the reality that his daughter had fallen victim to severe altitude sickness, which had been the cause of the abdominal hernia she had developed over the course of the expedition. With nothing further that could be done, the team spent the rest of the day mourning the loss of Devi before they were ultimately forced to leave her body near Camp 4 on her namesake mountain as they made their retreat to base camp the next day. In wake of the incident, Willie Unsold 
was devastated by the loss of his daughter, Nanda Devi, on the slopes of Nanda Devi. However, this tragic loss would not discourage the avid mountaineer from further excursions in the mountains, as when asked why he continued to climb following his daughter's untimely death, he responded by stating, quote, What? Do you want me to die of a heart attack, drinking beer, eating potato chips, and watching a golf tournament on TV? He said. Willie would later lose his life in an avalanche on Mount Rainier in Washington State, a peak he had summited over 200 times previously. Nanda Devi was again closed off to mountaineers in the year 1983, which has remained in effect up until present day. Thank you all for watching.